Chemistry by Charles Leadbeater. He was also like a medical intuitive and he he was the first one to describe the subatomic particle called the Anu, how it looks like there's a male and female holes, one's a spring and one's a hole. And he, he was able to um, see, he could travel to the moons of Jupiter to the macro, but he could also go down into the microcosm and view atomic structure. So he had like um, X-ray eyes that perceived and penetrated the reality as we know it. And it was all pure sacred geometry. You're looking at all the five platonic solids there. And so when he looked at an element, say um, th this is called actinium. So we're looking at the mandala, the atomic structure of mandala, uh, the atomic structure of actinium, one of the elements on the periodic table perceived through what he called micro psi. Micro psi means he could see the invisible world. He made visible the invisible. And so one of his students was called Chris Illert. This is called Alchemy Today. Uh, there's a several books to this series, but Chris Illert, who you can see on the back here, he's like my personal mathematician. So if I have a real math problem, I will contact Bruce. I mean, I will contact Chris Illert or Bruce Cathy and, um, you, you can see here that um, he was showing that the nesting of the five platonic solids was the key to all sacred geometry of the periodic elements and the tables. So that's the cover there. And I'm showing you this one here. Um, so this page here, I'll zoom in on that. You're looking at um, the oxygen molecule here. And oxygen could decompose into what's called the cube octahedron. So this is the shape of the cube octahedron here. It's got squares and triangles and it had little square windows. So it could actually release like an alpha particle, which is called a tetrahedron. So this, this is really rare um, chemistry. That's why it's called occult chemistry. And basically the key to transmutation of the elements is that when we take this jitterbug, the cube octahedron that's described here, when we compress it, it, um, it forms the octahedron and it compresses down into the tetrahedron, which is that alpha particle that they're describing here. So the, the cube octahedron, which is really called the 12 around the one, is the key to alchemy. And, and the deeper level of alchemy is um, viewing everything that we know as cubes can actually be shown as tetrahedra. So this is real uh, quantum physics, understanding the structure of the tetrahedron within the tetrahedron. So this, unfortunately, this work was the curriculum for uh, Wollongong University. So uh, Chris Hillett tried to bring this into the university at Wollongong, but it got shut down. So my work is um, important because I'm keeping this work alive. And still talking about occult chemistry and Chris Hillett, this man called Dr. Moon around the 1950s, he's like another Einstein and he, he was the one that said that there's no such thing as a vacuum. And um, we, we, we can see here that um, space is, is not empty. It is completely rich with sacred geometry. And the nesting again of the five platonic solids was the key to the five elements or nesting. So he had a whole theory of um, like say how calcium was really a sacred geometry. So the calcium molecule was one shape within the other shape. And believe it or not, all this work got shut down and that's why no one knows about it. Um, but, you know, thanks to the work of Nassim Haramine and our friends over there, they've um, revived this lost knowledge. Okay, on another subject, um, th this is a curiosity. It's called IO Unveiled and it's got an interesting name. Um, the Bridlovian Theory of the Origin of Numbers. So just checking out the way those numbers are written with straight lines, this person believes that um, when, we when we look at 45 degree angles, this is the, the map of the soul, the 45 degree angle has got to do with the soul. So this was the number one. And then if you wanted to look at say the number two, um, so number two would look like this Z shape because it's got two lots of 45 degrees. And number three, so number three, this is a whole new theory of the origin of where did one, two, three come from? It's the memory of 45 degree angles. So number four, so number four would be 
four 45 degree angles like that. The 90 degree is 245. Um, I just want to show you this because this is such, you'll never see this information anywhere. It's so old. Now look at number five. You've got five lots of 45 degrees. And then now number six, you're going to say, oh, this doesn't look like a six. How can this look like a number six? It's an L shape. But if you look closely at this L shape, you've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, 45 degree angles, and it forms that L in the circle. So that was the origin of six. And it goes on to seven. So how, how would seven look like? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we cut into the circle, we get that shape. And, and eight is an obvious one that when we put, when we put eight 45 degree angles, we get that shape. And when we, um, do nine this is the last one so when we get nine you can see that nine was four um nine lots of 45 degrees so this was a very interesting book but this is what inspires researchers like myself and then there's another book by walter russell called the universal one this is a classic this should be in everyone's library um he he um had all this theory of spirals and energy going in and out with a a theory about plus four to minus four going into the visible and inv invisible world. So he was a master and he he explored, he was able to explain the tornado principle by looking at these counter rotating fields, which is, as you know, is inherent in nature. And he's got thousands of diagrams like this that show how the spiral is the, is the ultimate pathway of least friction. So that's Walter Russell. And another classic is called, um, is The Rhythms of Vision by Blair. Th this book, I think, was done in 1975. But I, this book really inspired me because it was the first time we could actually see um, what DNA looked like. This is a slice of the DNA helix, and it was a memory of pentagon and hexagon, what we call pentahexa. So this is a very rare diagram, and... and um, and he, he obviously looked at the work of um, the five platonic solids and saw them as living organisms. And just one more picture. He, he did some work with magic squares as well, which was my passion. I, my work all started with the magic square of three by three. So that's um, the series there. I'm just going to check these six books over here. Um, I'm just going to check these six books here. I wanted to start with um, proportional form. Now, these six books here, they've all got the same spiral. They were given to me by um, Sacred Science Institute in, in America. So I gave them my four books on magic squares about 15 years ago. And every time they sold the books, the royalties I got um, were given. He, he, he actually prints all the rare books. So this one called proportional form, right? is an interesting one because when you um, look at it, it had very rare diagrams of like the circle. When you divide the 360 degrees by 1.618, it divides into two parts, a smaller part and a, and a lesser part. So the thing about the, the golden angle, that's called the golden angle. So when you look at this decal that I've done, this is the, the dark blue is the, the bigger part and and there's a smaller part of 137.5 degrees is a smaller. So this is the appropriate um, um, breakdown of the circle in the right harmonics. So that's proportional form. Um, and obviously he looked at um, the examination of the human anatomy as well. So um, there's a lot more I can show you. Perhaps we could do another whole series on this. Um, the, we can always do another part to this, but just wanted to show you that